to have the whole of the group here tonight. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. Um, very good to, uh, to have you here today. Um, thank you to Malcolm for organising uh, our part times over and our focus um, for January and February. Um, look at John and book I'm sure it's very helpful to everyone. Um, we do appreciate that. Thank you. Um, but uh, it's wonderful to have the opportunity to speak. I spent a lot of time thinking about um, about the message. Um, we uh, discovered um, Brackville New Shopping Centre. Um, I don't know if you've been there yet, but it's pretty good. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, I was going to say I got dumped in the uh, coffee shop, the Phoenix coffee shop, <laughs> while Chevy and Alice went, uh, went shopping. But uh, anyway, I ended up there working on my message um, in December, and uh, it was uh, <coughs> certainly very exciting to um, just focus on this chapter, John chapter 2, which is our great place where we'll be today. Um, I was talking to an assistant. At the uh, um, in the shopping centre, and they said, "Yeah, don't realise uh, retail is incredibly cutthroat. Um, you know that's why there's so much effort, you know, to put these new places to uh, um, to base you know base the shops in." Now I'm thinking, how oh, it's a shame if our Christians get like that. Um, you know that's how. Uh, we, we feel like we're always looking for something new. Um, it's great to have a new year, but at the same time, we want to make sure that we are really digging deeper um, rather than feeling a sense of um, dissatisfaction, which is so easy to feel. And certainly she was feeling, she was a bit like, well, back not one last long, you know, it's going to get bulldozed and they're going to go to somewhere else, you know. But, uh, wow. <coughs> Not the way I was feeling at all. Um, I trust we had a good Christmas. Um, Christmas can be a, um, a sad time as well as a really positive time. Um, a time when you notice somebody missing. Um, maybe somebody you've lost in the last year. Um, but uh, it's, uh, it's marvelous to remember that uh, we're together as a community and we can encourage each other. I know we did encourage each other over the Christmas break, so that's very good, thank you. Um, I wonder how you feel about the new year. Um, some people can't wait to get into the new year. They feel like, uh, you know, yeah, bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> My son Ben is probably like that. Um, presently driving back to um, to the airport in, uh, with Tony and Karen, who are also um, also for the wedding. Harry can be got out yesterday, which is marvellous. Um, Lizelle has been sending photographs, so uh, uh, we should get caught up on that. Um, but uh, um, you know, for others of us, the new year can be a bit more challenging, can't it? Um, you can feel a bit like, well, you know, what's, what's this year going to throw at me? Um, I always think my health is a good challenge for me because uh, on a positive light, I can think, yeah, God is teaching me great things, what am I going to learn this year? And then always in a similar time, I can think, oh my goodness, how am I going to cope this year? Um, a scripture I, uh, I chose myself this year, maybe this is a, uh, a helpful scripture for some of us. Um, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Um, I just saw Ben and Shree. It's really great to have you here. Shree was due on Friday, is that right, Shree? <laughs> Anytime. Anytime, right? So, Ben, we're here to help. <laughs> And uh, <clears throat> our good names are behind, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it's, 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 
this helper's hand. Um, it's marvelous to have a theme scripture too. I, uh, I I trust that you know we um, you know we we really use the scriptures that way. You know, sometimes when you check when you face challenges in your life, it's really good at the beginning of a new year. Just say, right, I, let me hang on, not just for now, but for the whole year ahead. Mm. And really make the most of that scripture. Um, a blend of truth and grace. A blend of truth and grace mm. is what we're going to be talking about today. We have a, um, a focus this year um, to build the church and... Uh, you know, the beginning of the year, right now, will be a bit like, oh my goodness, you know, it feels like a, a steep hill to push all the way up. But uh, we have some objectives for the year, let me remind you what they are. They're all focused on the theme of building. Um, to build a community who are close to God and inspired to tell others about Him. <clears throat> you know, it's a good thing to have some empty seats because they need to be filled. Amen. Um, but you know, what we're trying to do, we're trying to build a God-centered community. We're trying to share that with others. To build friendships and have time for those God puts in our paths. Um, I wonder what you were like uh, just making time for people. I'm not very good at that. Um, I've always got something else I've got to do. It seems like there's always a lot of things to do. But it's great just to have time to make, um, you know, for relationships. To build together and continue to strengthen and encourage the local ministries. Um, very appropriate to have Bournemouth here, but uh, it's very exciting, the local focus that we have um, and I uh, really appreciate that because we are a very spread group but at the same time the, uh, the desire to use that to our advantage is very exciting um, and uh, to build up the next generation of men and women leaders um, welcome to the new year um, very exciting to have and you need to focus on. Um, but uh, it's, it is important for us to have, I believe, a bit of direction <clears throat> as Christians. Um, John chapter 1, Jesus calls to the disciples. Maybe rather like us. I know we've called um, and they respond. They say, yes, we're up for the challenge. And maybe it's a little like us going into our new year. You know, we, uh, we're up for the challenge. We've got a new year ahead of us. Um, but also, we made a start. And John chapter 1 is all about making a start. What do we need to make a start? Well, we need light for our path, don't we? And that's something that I appreciate. Probably all of us appreciate so much. Um, you know, our, our, our paths are as spiritually are dark, mm -hmm. but um, you know, God's word sheds light mm. on our path ahead. Life is so complicated, isn't it? Um, I thought life was complicated when I was about 10. Yeah. Um, and then as a teenager, it gets a lot more complicated. Yes, it does. Um, you know, and then beyond that, it gets even more complicated. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it's so important for us to uh, um, pray for each other. Yes. Not one thing for the year, and just pray for each other. Mm -hmm. Pray for your young people um, as they face the challenges that they face. Um, but life does get more and more complicated. Our emotions, our desires, our ambitions. They grow and they, they can be an issue. Um, Brianna takes her GCSEs this year. Oh. Um, I checked her on Friday and yes, she does. So Brianna's 
Do you remember your GCSEs? That's mm -hmm. when you understand. Life starts to get a bit serious when you're at that stage of life. You know, you start to take really exams that matter rather than just exams that you have to sort of turn up to and then leave at the end um, and then get the results on Monday morning where you're told you didn't do very well. Well, at least I always just get told I didn't do very well. One of my, um, <clears throat> I remember French was always my worst subject and we had a French teacher called Mr. Ellsley and uh, she used to read out the exam results from the bottom up. <laughs> and you know, Dad would always be down the bottom. But uh, on this occasion, he wasn't at the bottom. And it got to 20, and he still had me a mention, 10. He still had me a mention, um, 5, still had me mentioned. I thought this really is going to be a historic moment, 4, 3, 2. I thought, yeah, I've come first, you know. Oh, my, it wasn't me. So I said, I put my hand, I said, <clears throat> How come you didn't my name yourself? You were bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing new on French. It was all, and my father was fluent in French, so I, uh, I think it was from Berlin. Um, but uh, life is complicated. You know, I think of uh, a Heineck and B getting married yesterday. We are so excited for them. Life is more complicated though. Yeah. When you get married, you have to learn to apologize yeah. and uh, take responsibility for things much more quickly. Mm -hmm. um, as, uh, as teens, life complicates as teens. You have learned to, um, to be a leader, to, uh, um, instead of just being led, um, to actually stand up and have your own convictions. As a parent of um, preteens, you have to learn to be their friend, um, to get alongside them, and to be a, a support and encouragement. Um, we have some new children this year. I'm very excited about that. Um, you know, it's wonderful that Ben Shreer here. Your time will come soon. Um, Tim and Tash had Jake, which is marvellous. Um, First of all, yeah, I saw uh, Josh and Bula, um, Joelle's hair looking very good though. Is she still asleep? Yes, okay, good. Keep her asleep. <laughs> Excellent. And Topa and Abby, uh, congratulations on uh, um, Temi being, being born as well. But life has this habit of getting more and more complicated. <clears throat> Um, Corin passed her driving test, yes. as I mentioned on Friday, so congratulations, wow. Corin. The roads have got more complicated. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so you're, you're that sage. I remember when, uh, when we did that pregnancy test, and we found out that Chevy was expecting Ben, I felt so overwhelmed, I felt completely I'm not ready for this. I remember going for a walk in Regent's Park and uh, I just felt like, oh my goodness, what's ahead? I'm not, you know, I've been a teen, but I'm not ready to be a dad. Um, uh, that was a huge, huge challenge. I remember that. I remember Ben was born. I think it was a conference in, uh, I've forgotten what it was, but I remember talking to this fellow called Sam, Sam Lang, who wrote that book. Um, what's well, going to be yeah, um, um, raising awesome kids? And uh, I said to him, what's the key? You know, thinking, you know, that say he must have all the answers how to raise children. <laughs> and he said, well, just teach them the Bible. Make sure they know the Bible well, and then they'll be okay. And of course, that was very good, helpful advice. Life goes on, though, doesn't it? Elderly parents, some of us have elderly parents, and that can be a challenge. Mm -hmm. Dealing with that old age ourselves um, can be a real test of our confidence and our courage. Um, but, uh, you know, this, this is life, this is what life is about, and it's good to have God, mm -hmm. and it's good to be in a spiritual community 
which can be such a support to each other. Mm. Mm. Um, to start off with, in uh, John chapter John chapter one, um, verse fourteen, it says, um, "The Word became flesh." and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, and the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. So our theme for our service today is really just from the scripture, you know, grace and truth. What do you mean by grace and truth? Well, I think we probably have a, um, a private inkling of really what um, we're thinking about here. You know, there are two ends of a spectrum, aren't they? On one end there's um, the spectrum of grace, um, at the other end there's the spectrum of truth. And in John chapter 2, as Michael mentioned in the communion, <coughs> we see Jesus um, at a wedding. It's a time which really illustrates in many ways um, the need for grace. And, uh, you know, I don't know about you, but I can wonder a bit, you know, how did Jesus find time to spend time at a wedding? You know, couldn't he have been spending his time better elsewhere? But clearly that's not the case. There's something for us to learn very much from this here. Um, you know, some of us grew up maybe with um, not the best models of authority. And sometimes we can have a rather mindset towards authority. Or a mindset where, where we feel that authority is, is rather against us rather than, than for us. And sometimes what we do as a result of that is uh, we go to the other extreme. When you've had a bad experience of too much grace, we can think, well, you know, we've got to really make sure that you know, the law is laid down and things are really clear. On the other hand, we can have um, authority figures who lay down the law a lot and make us feel like, well, where, where is the love and the patience and the grace that life really needs? You know, in, uh, in John chapter 2, we read about Jesus um, making time at a wedding. Rather like our God to make time for people around us. Um, but uh, he makes time as a wedding. And uh, while they're at this wedding, as Mark mentioned, they run out of wine. Now, there's a responsibility if you organise a wedding. I, in the future, by the way, scary thought, but I, I'm the to Albert. Albert's a great, uh, you know, I think how well he helped Ben and Cherie and um, Jamie and, and, uh, uh, and Maria this year. But you, you know, there was an important responsibility um, to look after the guests. Um, and, uh, and in um, verse 6 it says, Nearby stood six water jars the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. So these are big containers. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. Um, so they filled them with, to the bread. Then he said to them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so. And the master of the banquet Tasted the wine, and which had been more simply turned to wine, he did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have kept the best to last. No, it's amazing how Jesus, um, you know, this wasn't just any old wine, this was the best stuff. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's important for us to, to appreciate here that Jesus 
had time and Jesus made time for people. Maybe there are areas in your life that you feel a bit like, you know, I, I, I need a bit of help, but God isn't really that interested in this or that area. You know, it's very encouraging to know that with grace, there's a great sense of importance, things that matter to you, matter to God. Um, and, uh, you know, I think as young people, you know, we must pray for young people. As young people, it's so important to remember that, you know, things that really start to matter to you, matter to God. And it's important to pray to God about those sorts of things, and then to pray and take those things. Um, but, you know, Jesus had a warmth about him that, that really we do well to imitate. Um, there was a warmth that drew people to Jesus. Um, and, uh, you know, that's something as Christians we need to, uh, you know, we need really to make sure um, that we emulate. So, you know, grace is, uh, maybe you're at the grace end of the spectrum. Of course, there are weaknesses that come with grace, um, sentimentality. Um, but clearly here we see Jesus was somebody who was full of grace um, and uh, certainly had time and was aware of, uh, of people's needs. Let's talk about truth for a few moments. Truth. Um, clear boundaries. Um, life works this way and it doesn't work that way. This is right, this is wrong. This is how to make a relationship work, a family work, how to raise children. This is the way not to do those things. This is how to treat people. This is how not to treat people. And then, well, for me, I know the scriptures are really clear on how to become a Christian. This is how to become a Christian. Um, and I just clearly laid out that. We don't judge up to we see Jesus, if we like him, the sort of the other side of the, the coin, we see Jesus goes to the temple. And in the temple, things are not the way they should be. Jesus obviously knows that the temple should be a place of prayer. But it's become somewhere where there's buying and selling of, uh, of sacrifices, and we pick up in, in verse, verse, um, verse 15. So he made a whip of cords, a, a whip of cords, and drove all from the temple courts, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold, Dove, she says, get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. Mm. You know, Jesus clearly here is a great man of truth. Just earlier you read how he's an incredible man of grace, but now he's a great man of truth. You know, grace and truth can be two ends of the spectrum, can't they? Um, and we know the extremes. Very often we know the extremes very well. We are very aware that, you know, if there's a lot of grace, maybe we feel like not much gets done. There's love and there's tolerance and patience. But as we mentioned earlier, the weakness can be sentimentality. <laughs> On the other hand, there's truth. And uh, we can feel like truth is so valuable because it gives clear judgments. But on the other hand, the weaknesses, even in Jesus' day, the legalism of the Pharisees, um, you know, really came through. It was spoken about so much. I have to behave this way in order to be a Christian. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier about becoming a Christian. It's so great that it's so clear in the scriptures how to be a Christian. But for me, being Christian before I was a real Christian, it was all about how you felt. 
if you felt close to God, if you felt saved, then you were, um, you were saved. Um, on the other hand, the scriptures are very clear on that, and that's such a, a great blessing for us. Um, you know, just to have um, you know, clear, um, a clear message of the gospel laid down for us. Sometimes you can help by people who show who are one stream or the other. And the challenge for us is not to repeat things ourselves, in that we, we end up on one extreme or the other extreme. You know, Jesus um, was, is the perfect illustration of where to be on that line, grace and truth. Not grace or truth, or truth or grace. Um, so maybe as you think about this new year, what are you going to take into this new year? Do you need a scripture um, that's going to shed light and help you throughout this year? Is there a scripture that really speaks to you very clearly? Um, and, uh, uh, and what about the spectrum of truth and grace? Do you need, um, you know, maybe your person is really on the end of the spectrum of truth, or on the end of the spectrum of grace? Maybe it's important this year to, um, to find a good, healthy uh, place where God wants you to be. Mm -hmm. As we start with you let's pray together and we'll finish your report. Let's pray together. Um, Father, thank you for the light of the scriptures. Thank you that your light brings life. Um, thank you that your light sheds path on our paths so that we can help others. I pray further for ourselves that we would find the, uh, the right blend of grace and truth that you'd help us to, uh, uh, to start this year with some really good um, focuses. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Tim.